Hey guys, and welcome to Blending with Water-Based Markers. In this little tutorial, well, I should say long tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to blend markers in eight different ways and essentially treat them like watercolor. So let's get into some materials. First up will be water-based markers. Alcohol-based like Prismacolor, Permanent Marker, or Copics won't work, it needs to be water-based. I'm gonna show you techniques with four different kinds, but you can use any that you have available. I'm gonna be using Artline Sticks brush markers. They're my absolute favorite for blending. I'll be using Tombow dual brush pens, which are really popular in lettering, so I really wanted to show you guys how those work. And if you have the clear blender pen that comes with most of the packs, I'll show you how to use that too. I'll also be using Crayola broad tip markers because they're so popular and they're so cheap and easy to find everywhere, so it's a really affordable and accessible option. And lastly, something a little different, some Sharpie fluorescent liquid highlighters, which is awesome because you get these really great, fantastic fluorescent blends because of the fact that they're highlighters. After whatever water-based marker you're gonna use, we're also gonna need some watercolor paper. Any brand will do, but my favorite is this Canson XL watercolor paper pad. You'll also need a palette or any sort of Ziploc bag that you can use to put your ink on, and I'll explain that a little later. You'll also need a paper towel, just because we're gonna be cleaning our brushes in between blends, um, so that way we keep them clean. You'll need a cup of water, and then your brush. You can use a traditional brush or a water brush. I personally love the water brush because it keeps the brush tip wet all the time, since there's water in the barrel, and that way you don't have to dip it into your water constantly, and you have a little more control. Um, but use whichever one you're most comfortable with, or whichever one you have. And lastly, you'll just need a pencil so we can jot down some notes in our paper as we're doing our blends. First up, I just want to talk about the blend combinations that we'll be working on today. It'll only be doing four different kinds of blends with these four colors, but there are an infinite number of possibilities once you learn a technique. So go ahead and grab one of your sheets of watercolor paper, and you can just do this as a quick reference guide. We'll have yellow and red, yellow and blue, pink and red, and then pink and blue. And if you wanna do any other different kinds while you're doing this demonstration, go ahead and feel free. The techniques will all be the same, and the effects will be the same as far as going from one color to another, from dark to light. So if you don't have these colors or just wanna work with other ones, that's totally fine as well. Just take a moment, um, if you do wanna use these, these combinations, take a moment to go ahead and create this little cheat sheet for yourself. First, I'm just going to explain to you the different techniques and then we'll jump into them. Go ahead and grab your blank sheet of watercolor paper. I split this up into four and then split that four up into two each. Uh, so that way it's a little bit easier. You don't have to do it this way, but I just found this to be the cleanest so you can see it all. So we have four main categories as far as the techniques for blending goes. So these are not official titles or anything. These are just kind of what I've put together from experience and just what I'm calling them to make it easy. So the first technique will be marker plus marker, meaning our marker will be the only thing that touches the paper in order to create the blends. We're not gonna use the water brushes or anything else like that. The second technique will be a marker plus a blender pen. So again, no brushes are needed for this technique. Just brands like Tombow have this clear tip kind of so you can blend things together. And there may be some other branded markers that have them. I don't have any per se, but so the only one I have is the Tombow, but they all should basically work the same. And then you have marker plus a brush. So that means that on the paper, you're gonna use a marker as well as a water brush. And then we have brush plus brush. And that will mean that we won't touch the marker on the paper at all. Everything will be done with just the brush. And I'll go into more detail in just a moment. So we have those four main categories. And then we have subcategories into that. As far as the subcategories go, we'll go into those details in just a moment in the next lesson. Um, so just make sure to get your paper set up into eight different sections. If you wanna do this exact part, that's totally fine. Uh, your marker plus marker, marker plus blender pen, marker plus brush, brush and brush. And just have all of your materials out, all of your brushes, your water, your paper towel, your palette or your Ziploc bag, plus the markers you'll be using. You don't necessarily have to do them in the same color schemes that I have here. I'm just trying to do all different kinds and we'll go through in all different kinds of shapes as well. 
So our first technique is going to be rubbing brush tips. You can grab any two colors of any combination that you'd like since I already have the yellow to red here. I'm just going to do the pink to red. And you can do a stripe, you can do a circle, you can do any kind of shape you want to practice this. I just do a line just because if you're going to be lettering, that's most of your strokes will be a straight line. Um, so it's easy, but we'll do all kinds. So first, every time you do any blend, you want to have your lightest color on the bottom. Because if not, if you try to do the light color on top of the dark color afterwards, the blending's not gonna really going to work and the dark color will just absorb all of it without really working very well. So... What we do here is we have our pink, and now we want to go, like here, we're going to take the blue all the way down. So you're going to take your two brushes, and you're going to grab the light one and pick up some of the dark color. And you see how I have some of that blue here? And then just go ahead and apply it. And the more you use your brush, the less ink you'll have because it's, you know, kind of rubbing off, which helps. And then you just go ahead and repeat that process. So pick up more of that blue or whatever darker color you're using. Now, if you, you notice that it's still kind of dirty, and if you tr keep blending down, you're just going to get more of that dark color. So what you can do is take your Ziploc, and you can kind of rub some of that blue off and you can even take your paper towel and kind of just get that blue and that way your tip is back to normal. So it just has pink and then you can go back in there and blend down. Now this technique is not my favorite. It You have to then dirty the lighter tips and because you're doing so much blending directly on the paper, it can fray your tips even more and start fraying the paper. But I still wanted to show it to you as an option. So if you notice, we're going from dark all the way to light. And now let's try it with a different set. So I'm going to grab my art line sticks and let's do a circle this time. Oops, can't find the cap. So we can do a circle with the lighter color again as your base. And now let's grab this marker. Make sure you pick up some of that blue or whatever darker color you're doing. And you just start to apply it. And now I'm getting very close to the bottom, so if I was going to keep adding blue, it just all turned that green. So I'm going to get my paper towel and just kind of clean off the end so the blue is off of it. And now, as you notice, it's pulling more of the yellow and blending that all together. Clean some more off and keep going. You can grab some more blue. Again, not my favorite technique, but I just wanted to show it to you. The, the blends are not as strong and you just run the risk of destroying your pens and the surface of the paper too much. But sometimes you're all you have are your two markers. You don't have a water brush. You don't have a palette. You don't have anything. So this could be something that could help. Now, if you notice, it's not very dark up here. You can always add some of the color directly as well. And then pick some more up. And push that down. Clean some of that off. So that way I don't take any more. And there you have a blend. And then let's try just one more space just so I can fill this up. So let me use my Crayola markers. And let's do some pink to red. So I'm going to do pink and red for these two. So I'm going to grab my lighter color. 
and I'll do a triangle this, or excuse me, a square. And this is just to show you that blending can be done in any sort of shape. So I would open this up, take some of the darker color on the lighter color, and go ahead and apply it. With these markers, it's a little more difficult to pick up some of that color. So as you see here with Crayola, it's not as effective. Crayolas are going to be one of those where because they are cheaper markers, they are not as inky on the tips, so it's hard to really pick up some of that color. So that is rubbing your brush tips together. Up next we have blending with the lighter color. So it's going to be very similar to what we did here, except instead of rubbing the brush tips, we're going to apply all the ink directly onto the paper. And I'll show you what that means. So let me grab my highlighters. And I'm just using all the different kinds of pens um, just to show you the techniques can be done with all kinds of instruments. You don't have to worry about using the same exact one I'm using at the time. So let's go ahead and create a line here. Again, your lighter color will be your base. And I'm going to pick up that red. So basically when you blend with the lighter color, you're going to put the darker one on top and then take the light color again and pull that color down. And that helps blend it really well. Let's go ahead and add some more. You always want to start with a small amount of ink because if you start way too long, by the time you end up pulling, your lighter color will just disappear. So you can always add more and make it longer later, but just start with a small amount at the top. And there we go. So we have that really nice red to pink. And instead of rubbing the brush tip and doing that and rubbing the brush tip and pushing down, I went ahead and just added the color directly to the paper and then used the light color to pull it out and blend it all together. So let's go ahead and do that again. I will grab my Tombows and do a circle. We'll just do repeated shapes. So this technique is a little more efficient than the rubbing the brush tip, but once again, you're still using your brush tips directly on the paper and that's gonna cause them to be destroyed even faster. See, right now I have too much green going on, so I need to clean my tip. And then continue blending. And the blend is pretty inconsistent, if you notice. So these two techniques, that's why they're my first ones. I just wanted to get them out of the way. They're not my favorite and they're not ones I really use very often, if ever. It's just some that are an option if you don't have any water brushes or brushes or anything else on you at the moment. And so let's work on our last one, which will be that square. Let's do... So again, start with a very small strip of your dark color on top, and then I'm going to pull that color down again and blend with the lighter color. This is looking really dirty. Clean off that tip. And if you ever get to the point where it's looking really dark, instead of pulling down, like I just did, you can push up so that will bring that color up and kind of help that darker color recede. So it doesn't, the dark color doesn't just come all the way down. I'm gonna add some more. I think you can still put, push that blue a little further down. Clean off that tip. Okay. 
Alrighty. So there you have blending with a lighter color. Very similar to this one, but instead of rubbing the tips, you're going to apply your light color, then add a little bit of the dark color on top, and then once again take that light color to pull the dark down to blend it. The blends here are going to be very basic and not as tight and clean as you want them to be, but that's still an option for you if you're practicing or if you don't happen to have any water brushes or anything like that. My paper got a little dirty with purple towel, but that's okay. This is just a sketch and just some practice. So now we're going to have a marker plus a blender pen. So if you have the blender pen, go ahead and grab that, regardless of if it's Tombow or whatever brand you have. If you don't have a blender pen, you're more than welcome to watch it and see if you're interested in one. If not, you can just kind of fast forward to the next set, which will be the marker plus brush, because I'm just going to be using the blender pen uh, with this today. Okay, so first we have blending directly on the paper. That means we're going to grab your light color, put that down, and then your dark color. Let's do that blue again, or actually, let's do the red. So you can apply it directly onto the top of your light color, just like we did in this previous set. But instead of taking the lighter color to pull down, you'll take your blender pen to go ahead and blend the two colors together. Now let's see, I can add a little more red because it's kind of, as you pull down, it disappears a little bit. And then pull that down to blend with the blender pen. And if you notice, it goes from a nice dark red to the lighter pink. And I didn't have to touch that light color like I did in this previous one. Now cleaned off the blender pen over here on my paper towel. And sometimes it just gets stained. It's not, it's never permanently clean, white after you use it. But if you notice as I'm here, I mark here on my paper towel, there's no color on it, so you're fine. Now, we can also try using this blender pen with other kinds of markers that aren't the Tombos. So let's go ahead and do our circle here with the art line sticks. And let me grab my blue and apply that color. And then use my blender pen to swipe that down. And you notice it still works even though it's not being used with a Tombow pen. It's optimized to work with that Tombow ink, but if you want to purchase the Tombow brand, you can use it with any other water-based marker. Clean that off because that green is getting a little too far down. And see it is getting lighter. Clean it off again. And then I'm going to pull up instead and that way that green doesn't get too far down and muddy up all the yellow and cover up all the yellow completely. And say you think you've gone too far down with the green, you can always apply more yellow at the bottom or more of your lighter color to help re-blend that too. And there we have another blender pen. And then lastly, just one more shot. Let's actually try it with the Sharpie markers and see how that works out. The Sharpie highlighters, excuse me. You can also mix and match markers you don't have to necessarily use Tombows with only Tombows. Different water-based markers are totally, will totally work together. So let's say I use this pink Sharpie, and then I'm going to use this red Crayola one. And then let me grab my blender pen and push some of that down. Add some more red to try to blur this line here so it's not such a striking solid line across. And you see all the kinds of water-based markers can be interchangeable. You'll get different qualities, different shades, and you'll have more possibilities if you combine them. And that is blending directly on paper. So I put all my marker down on the paper and then just simply use the blender pen to 
go ahead and drag that down. Next up is using our blender pen, but instead of putting all of our ink down on our paper, we're gonna pick some of it up off the palette or Ziploc bag if you don't have a palette. And let me show you what I mean by that. So let's grab our Tombow, grab one light color and put that down. And then I will grab a dark color. And instead of adding the dark color directly to the paper, let's go ahead and use, I'm gonna try this Ziploc bag right here. You're gonna add some ink here. So you're gonna take that and then take your blender pen, pick it up off your palette or bag, and then you're gonna apply it. It's getting pretty far down, so I'm gonna clean it off and then continue blending so it stays light. And here you have another wonderful blend, but you only had to apply one color to the paper. This helps save some of your brush tips so that way you're not putting them on rough watercolor paper and you get to control the amount of ink you put on a little more. And now let's try that with our circle. Let's do some yellow highlighter here. I like to just go over it a few times even once it's solid so it's a little more inky and wet on top. And then let's get our blue since our blues are going to be a darker color, and you're going to apply this to your Ziploc bag or your palette, just so you have a good amount of ink there. And then make sure your blender pen is clean from the last time you used it. Mine still has a little pink on it, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that down. And then now that it's clean, pick up that darker color, and you'll see it picked up that color, and then you can apply it. Now because these are highlighters, this blue is not going to be as dark as the other ones, but you can do some really cool fluorescent blends. Cleaned off my blender pen a bit so I can continue blending without it getting all muddy at the bottom. Now let's try picking up some more blue and just adding it to the top so the top can be a little darker. Added some more, picking up some more, and try adding some more blue there. Clean that off. And I'm gonna pull up. Whoops, I got too much blue. And now you have a blend with some highlighter there. And then one last one. Let's do that with the art line sticks, and we'll do a yellow to red. And then once again, I'm going to, let's use the palette this time, just so I can use everything that you might have. And if say you don't have a palette or a Ziploc bag, anything that's plastic will do. If you have plastic packaging, anything that you can just go ahead and rub your pen on and the ink will like stay behind. So I'm gonna make sure this is clean. So we're gonna pick up that red and apply it with a blender pen. Okay, and you notice my orange is getting a little far down so I'm cleaning off. And then I can continue blending and that way it only subtly pulls that down without it completely overtaking the yellow. Clean off again. All right, and that top looks a little light, so let's add a little more red. All right, and there we have using a blender pen as well as a palette. Now this palette technique can also be used with your marker plus marker. So notice for these, we put everything down onto the ink, but you can also use this to just add your marker tips, pick up with the light color, and kind of keep going. Alrighty, so now we have our blending, our marker plus a brush. So now go ahead and grab your water brush 
or your regular brush, any one is fine. And we're gonna blend directly on the paper. So that means we're gonna take two colors. Let's take this pink. I'm gonna take red and apply it directly onto there. Again, remember only do a short amount because you can always make it darker and add more. And then take your brush and I don't add too much water, like don't dip it because if you have too much water, it's just gonna become a mess. So you just want just enough. And normally in water brushes, what I like about them is it keeps the tip constantly wet, but only slightly. So that way you're not adding too much water to the paper and ruining the blend. And if you ever find that your brush is a little dry, go ahead and dip it in water. You can take your water cup, dip it into there, but just get some of the excess off so it's not dripping wet onto the paper. You can go ahead and pull that down. And now that you're using a water brush and you're adding water, a lot of the times the colors you add onto there do get lighter. And then we have that really nice pink to red, but I think the red can stand to have a little more, so add some more and then continue. Moving down. So we have that wonderful blend. Now let's do our circle, our yellow circle. Let's do that with some Crayola. And now let's do the blue, or actually the red, because we already have the blue to yellow. So add some red on top. And then make sure your brush is clean from your last use. And then go ahead and start using your brush to pull it down. And actually, if you want, if you have a regular brush, that's fine. You're gonna have to wet it. But again, once you dip it in water, make sure you just take off some of that excess so you're not putting too much water on the paper. And once you start using water, it's a lot easier to kind of pull too much of the dark color down because there's, there's so much liquid. So just be careful as you're going through and just consistently clean your brush so you don't have any color on there as you start to get to the lighter portion. And there you have your circle with a regular brush. And then let's do one more Let's use the art line sticks again. We'll do our square. You don't necessarily always have to do it on the top. Your blends can come from anywhere. So let's add some of that blue. And let's say, let's do it from the center out. Remember this technique is good for anything from any part of the, sh the, sh the excuse me, the shape that you're working on. And so, Let's go ahead and try to blend this. Because the shape is so small, the pink is really gonna get lost a little more than if we had tried to do the center of that line, but we'll see what happens. So I'm cleaning off my brush and drying it a little bit, so that way I don't have too much of that blue, which turns into the purple. Again, cleaning it off shaking off the excess water and trying to blend that together a little more. Now, if you have too much of that purple going on, you can always add some more of the pink or whatever your lighter color is. Blending is just a matter of working with the materials and the more you do it, the more intuitive it'll get. Make sure you have a clean brush Try to pull some of that pink back in. And then, let's see, let's add a little more of that blue in the center. And I will clean off my brush, wipe off the excess. and then pull some of that color in both directions. And then we have a blend going both ways. 
Now the next technique will involve using a water brush, but instead of putting both colors on the paper, we're going to pick the darker one up off the palette like we did a little earlier with one of the previous techniques. So we're going to do picking up ink off of a palette. So let's do this pink. Let's, I'm just grabbing a Crayola. Again, I'm just using a random assortment of markers just so you can see the kind of blends with all kinds, but please feel free to use whatever you have. So I'm going to do my light color. And then instead of applying my dark color straight onto here, I'm going to apply it onto here and then pick up the ink with my brush. And I will use my water brush right now. So pick up some of that ink and then apply it. So it's getting a little dark and it's not lightening very much. So I'm going to clean some of that off and then continue blending so that I don't lose all of that light pink. Pick up some more of that red. Apply it to the top. And now you have your gradient. And so when you start working with water and ink, if you have too much water, like this had a little too much at the tip, if you notice it starts to bleed a little bit on the edges. So always be careful to not have too much water on your brush because it can just kind of spread as you're going and ruin your line. This is just practice, so that's fine. But that's why earlier I was saying, just be careful with the water. And so up next, let's do another highlighter one. So let's do a circle. And then let's grab that blue. And I'll add it to the palette. What I love about these palettes is that they, you can just wipe all the marker off and just reuse it and not have to keep raiding your kitchen for Ziploc bags. And then, so let me just pick up this blue and then we'll go ahead and add it. And we will start pushing it down, pushing it down. But I still have a lot of blue on my tip, so I'm gonna go ahead and dip it in water and then clean that out. And then continue to push that down. Again, clean that off. And continue to blend that down. And that's really the key when you're trying to go from dark to light is you're constantly cleaning off your brush so that way you're not pushing all of that dark color down. And just notice the difference between this blend to this blend. This blend is much cleaner and it kind of transitions much smoother because you're using a water brush versus a blender pen. And your surface of your paper is not as ripped up because you're not going over and over and over it with a really harsh tip. So using a water brush is usually my favorite. And now, oops, got some of that yellow. And now we can stand to add a little more blue up there. So let me add some more blue onto my palette. Oh, there goes my marker. And then pick it up and let's just try to add some to the top. And I don't want to overtake the bottom color blend that I've done already so much. So I just keep cleaning off my pen or I'm sorry, my brush. So I can keep working on that blend. And I got a little bit of the yellow. And that happens. I'm a mess all the time. So don't feel bad if your desk is a mess and you end up, you know, while you're practicing getting stuff everywhere. My hands always end up with ink everywhere. It's just part of the fun process. Okay, and now for our square, let's go ahead and use our art line sticks. I think that's the only one I haven't used right now. Can't keep track anymore. <laughs> so let's grab this pink. Or actually, no, we're gonna grab yellow and the red. Oops, I kind of put my hand down there earlier, so it's pushing a little bit of the blue in there, but we'll just ignore it. It'll be fine. All right, so let me grab the Ziploc now instead and add some red on there. Pick up that red and let's start adding it to our square or whatever shape you did. Have fun with it. You want to do some hearts, some stars. That works too. And as far as brushes go, I like brushes with thinner tips. If you notice, this is a very fine tip because it gives you some more control over the detail. If you had a really fat one, it can easily get very messy and blobby all over the place. So I prefer just a finer tip. And it doesn't matter what kind of brush pen you have or a brush, 
as long as it's a finer one, you'll have a little more control. And so this looks a little too orange, so I just want to add some more red. So let's put some more red down and pick that up. And as you can see, this is a very long process. We've only done a few simple shapes, so when you're working on a full piece, it will take you some time, but it will definitely be worth it when you have some really beautiful blends. Clean off my brush, getting a little too contaminated down by the yellow, and then pull some more of that down. So this is the picking up the ink on the palette with the brush is probably one of my most favorite blending techniques. I do it all the time where I'll do my base letters and my light color and then pick up the color with my water brush and slowly add it in as I go. This is probably the technique that I use the most and the one I found most success with. But when you're practicing, whatever one feels best to you and whatever work comes out, however your work comes out the best, feel free to use that one. So now we're down to our last two techniques and this is the only thing touching the paper will be your brush and water. None of the markers will touch it. This one's a little trickier, but it comes up with really, really nice results. So first, this one, this first one, excuse me, is going to be, we're going to add all the water to our paper first and then add all the ink. So take your water cup, pick up some water, and this time you do want it to be a little more wet so that way your line so you're going to do just some just water no ink or anything you just want a strip of water the bad thing about this technique is that you have to be really careful to make sure you see everything you want to do or it can just start becoming a mess in your letters and everything will kind of go all over the place so you have your strip of water and now I'm going to add yellow as my base or light color. So I'm going to take yellow and rub it onto your palette or Ziploc bag, whichever one you have. And now take your brush and you're going to pick up some of that yellow. And I want the yellow to be at the bottom, so I'm going to start adding that yellow to the bottom. And you see that it's starting to be absorbed by the water. Pick up some more of that yellow and keep adding it and pushing it up to about halfway for now or a little more than half, I should say. And now let's grab our blue. I'm gonna add some blue here, or whatever dark color you're using. And now make sure the, the yellow's all, all cleaned off of your brush or your light color's cleaned off for now. And then you're gonna pick up some of that darker color and add it to the top. And start pushing it down towards the yellow. Pick up some more. And every time you pick up new color, I always start at the top since it's the darkest. Because if you pick up and do it in the center, then you have your dark to light to dark again. And your blend kind of gets a little bit fuzzy. So I'm just going to do this and start combining them in the middle so you get that green. And when you're doing this like wet on wet technique, it's a little hard to see the blends. But once they dry, they will come out a lot nicer. I need to actually add some more yellow, so let me add some more yellow to here. And because I'm just trying to combine the yellow and blue, I'm not going to clean off my brush. I'll just pick up some more yellow with the blue on it and then kind of start rubbing these together. And so now that I've got a yellow, a green, and a blue, I'm going to wash off my brush and without any ink on it, just try to start blending these together a little more. And then you have another blend. With a totally new technique. This one's a little harder to do because you can't really see. It's hard to really manage your entire brush when it's just water and no ink on it. But it come, has a really nice effect once it actually dries. And just be careful with this because it'll take a little bit longer than the others to dry. So now let's do our circle. So I just took some water. Let me actually use my regular brush for the rest of this one. Oops, I still had some ink on there. I didn't clean it properly, so let me clean that a second. All right, so I've got my circle. And now I'm going to add some yellow. Let's do some Tombow yellow. Let me grab my palette. Apply the yellow. And now let me pick it up with my brush and start adding it. I want it on the bottom. And the problem with this technique too is because now the paper is so saturated, 
it starts to warp and bubble up. So my paper has started popping up and it's pushing all the water to the other ends. All right, so I have some yellow. So be careful about not adding too much. You need just enough, which is kind of hard to gauge and you'll get more of that as you go and practice some more. And now I'm gonna add some red on top. And if you notice, this one is drying and it's gonna look, it looks so much nicer now that it's drying, going from that blue to green to yellow. Alrighty. So we're gonna pick up some of this red and let's add it to the top and then push it down towards the yellow to get that nice orange in the center. Clean off my brush. I'm gonna to try to push some of that yellow up and the red is really overpowering the yellow, so let me add a little more. Pick up some yellow, and then let me go ahead and add more, and then push up into the orange instead of pulling down. And I don't do this technique often because I still have a hard time keeping clean lines as I'm blending. So if you notice, my circle got a little blobby. I still need some practice with this technique, but it's still really nice once you get the hang of it. All right, so we've got our red to orange to yellow, which looks really good. And lastly, let's do a highlighter version of our rectangle. So let's do a pink to purple for this one. So I'm going to do my pink base, again making sure it's really saturated. And then we need the blue, so that way that blue will turn into purple. And now let's say we want the lighter color to be on top. Oops, I didn't clean that off properly, shame on me. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe this off because it's already contaminated with yellow and I don't want that. And then just reapply it here. Make sure my brush is completely clean. Oh, and I already made a mistake of not doing the water first, which I didn't realize. But since it's already on the paper, let's just continue going. <laughs> Anyways, so let's just continue this on this way since I've already messed up. Just adding that color up to darken it from the bottom up instead of from the top up. Or the top down, excuse me. Okay. So now that we have all of the water, except for this one, pretend this one didn't happen, um, you can see the blends look much nicer. They blend way nicer because of the fact that you put the water down first, but they can be a little hard to control because as you're going through, at least when you have just the brush, your strokes are they're a little easier to control and to keep in line. So this one got a little bit jagged, but it creates really beautiful blends once you have it down. So our last technique will be to do inky water plus ink. What I mean by inky water means instead of just doing the clear water like we did the first time, we're gonna add the ink into the water while we're drawing. So let's grab some yellow. I'm gonna use this highlighter yellow to start. Let me clean this off. Sorry about that. So I'm gonna take some of this highlighter yellow and instead of just doing water all the way down, on its own, I'm gonna pick up some of this yellow with a lot of water on my brush and then put that down. So of course, extremely similar to this one, except we're throwing down some ink to start instead of adding all the ink in afterwards. And now let's grab that blue, which I believe is still here. But let me just start a new one. So you have some of that blue. Again, clean off your brush because for this first time you don't want any contamination from the yellow yet. Pick up that blue and then start at the top. And start blending down. Okay, 
All right, that green is getting a little much, so let me go ahead and clean off my brush and continue blending so I don't lose that yellow. I'm gonna push up here once I get to this bottom part to complete that full blend. And this looks really nice here in the center, but I want just a little bit more blue on the top. So I'm just adding some more blue onto my palette or Ziploc, whichever one you're using. Pick that up and then add some more of that blue so it's a little darker. Now I'm gonna wipe this off and continue blending so the blend is a little more subtle and less harsh. And then we've got that, which looks really awesome. So let's do that again with our circle. And I'm gonna do that with the art line sticks. Let me grab a, a Ziploc, excuse me, I almost said paper towel. Let me grab some yellow. It's hard to see because of that paper towel, but I have some yellow on there. So I'm gonna wet my brush and then pick up that yellow and create my circle. Add a little more water to that and then pick up some more yellow. All right, so I'm happy with that. So let me grab my red. Clean off the brush so that way you don't contaminate any of the red with the yellow right at this moment. And then we're gonna add that to the top. Okay, clean off my brush since the orange is getting a bit much and that way I'm not pulling too much color down. Clean it off again with some water on my paper towel and then I'm going to start pulling up so that yellow doesn't get lost. But again, if it does, just make sure to add some more yellow onto your Ziploc or palette and you can just pick some more up and add some more yellow. Oops, didn't clean that off all the way. Pick up some of that yellow and you can pull up instead. Again, but I still want some more red up there because it's a little too orange. So I'll just add some more red. Pick that up and then add it to the top so it's a little bit darker. I'm going to clean off my brush so that way I can pull some more down without it contaminating the bottom. Clean my brush again. Keep going. Every time you start getting into the lighter color, clean your brush again all the way so that way your blend isn't getting completely lost. Almost there. I'm just trying to complete this circle since it looks a little jagged and I'm happy with that. And then last one is going to be our square which I will do with some Crayola. Uh, I was just thinking, what color combination? Okay, let's do the pink to the blue. Just kind of lost it there a little bit. Oh, and I did almost the same thing I did with that one, but I've caught it before I completely finished it. So let me grab my palette, add my pink ink, And then grab my brush, pick that up, and then finish the square the way it was supposed to be done. And you see it's a lot harsher, so I'm going to try to blend that in. And you'll notice different markers will react differently and will some will be more vibrant, some will be a little more opaque. and. You'll find what you like depending on what markers you're using. Crayola markers don't expel much ink, so it takes a little longer than with some of the other ones like the Tombos, but you can still get there. And the good thing about the Crayola markers is that they have such a wide variety of color choices, so your blends truly are infinite, full of infinite possibilities with them. Now let me add the blue on here. 
This blue is nice and dark. Let's try starting off on the side instead. Now because I have so much water, you see how it's spreading fast? Since that blue is so dark, I'm going to clean my brush off so that way as I blend it doesn't continue to contaminate too much. And the Crayola, it does dry really fast, so the blend isn't going to be as smooth most of the time because that ink just dries so quickly and look at how it's bleeding. Every marker will react differently, so always te do tests on a scrap sheet of watercolor paper before you go any further with any project. So that way you can kind of test out and see which ones will give you the best results. Because all water-based markers were not created equal. Oh, that still had some blue, so let me try again. I think that's as good as I'm gonna get. And so those are all of the different blends that we've gone through. All right guys, so now that we've gone through all the techniques, I'm just gonna do a few blends using actual letters and words just to show you how I go about doing an entire word. I'm not gonna use any technique in particular. Sometimes I'll use more than one and I'll try to use a bunch of the different ones I showed you just so you can see them in action. So I'm gonna start with my art line sticks and I'm just gonna grab a word. You're more than welcome to follow along. Any word is fine. I'll do a short one. Let's just do the word, the word high. So we have this high, and I'm going to add some blue. So I like to put it, the marker on my palette. I like using the marker plus brush technique. So now that I have the blue on the palette, I got my brush. It's a little wet, but not too much. I'm going to pick up that blue and start adding it to the top. And when I'm doing a complete word, oops, I went a little bit overboard there. Since I have so much dark blue there, I'm also going to add it here before I start pushing down. Now once it starts getting really light, I'll come back and kind of alternate. I'm gonna clean that off so that way I'm just pushing what's already there down and I'm not adding any more blue to contaminate the yellow. Cleaning my brush off again. And if you notice, every time I clean off my brush and come back, that color gets lighter and lighter. Now here, I'm gonna push back up, clean off again. And that looks really good. So I'm gonna grab some more blue, work on the tittle. The tittle, for those of you that don't know, is the dot in any of the I, a lowercase j, which is a nice little fun fact. It's such a funny word. Pick up some more blue. And you only want a little bit since this letter is significantly shorter. If you use a bunch of blue ink, the whole thing is gonna end up turning that bluish green. You're gonna lose the blend. Add a little more up there, clean off my brush, start pushing this down. Alrighty, clean off my brush again. I'm just going to take the water. There's no ink on my brush right now, just so I can pull that down. Pull this down and then up. And if you notice, there's not much blue left on these two, so we can just add some more. Again, always start off with a little bit, and then you can always add some more blue later. And that way you're not overdoing it. Clean off that brush and blend that better, blend that down a little more. I 
and then you can always tap it if you need to to pick up some of that water. Just make sure you clean your finger before you go back. Grab a little more of that blue, and then bring it down into here. Because you try to have it at around the same line, this is a little too yellow for me, so some of the diluted blue, since I've already started painting with it, I'm going to add it here. Clean off my brush. There we go. Just go over that little dot a little bit so it's at least a little watered down. And here we have our first blend. Super easy. All you need is a little bit of patience and just remember to keep cleaning off your brush. So now I'm going to try doing some block letters. I'll use my Tombow brush pens. Um, and I'm just doing short words just so that way you're not sitting here for an hour watching me. So let's do a block high. I always like, I find it easier to draw on the page first with the pen because I have more control with the pen versus the water brush. But I'll make sure to do one where I use the water brush first too. Sometimes when you use a brush pen on watercolor paper, because it's textured, some of the strokes are not as smooth, they're a little jagged, so you can just go in lightly and kind of clean up those edges if you want. Or sometimes that rough edge look is what you're going for. And that's great, and you can leave those in there. I'm going to add some blue directly on here. So that way I can kind of show you one of the other techniques. Let me grab my blender pen and start pushing some of that down. Same thing here. Let me put some on top. Always work in small areas because you marker ink tends to dry much faster so you don't want it to all dry out and then you don't get a chance to blend it then it'll just look like giant blocks of color instead of a nice smooth blend i'm going to clean off my blender pen because it's a little tainted and notice i'm not going all the way down yet because i don't want to touch that pink on the bottom because i will be using a water brush as well sometimes you can combine so i can start off with something like the blender pen so that way most of it is pre-blended and you're not oversaturating the paper let me clean off my pen come back clean off my pen on my paper towel sorry i have it off camera but i'm cleaning on my paper towel just rubbing it on there to get the ink off okay so i like how the blend has started but the blender pen is very limited so I can start off that way and with a brush, just make sure it's all clean. Actually, I'll grab my regular brush. Make sure it's completely clean and only a little bit wet, not too much. You don't want to oversaturate it. You can then come in and start to manually blend with your brush. I'm going to wet it a little more, clean that off. Oops. Here we go. Pull some of that down. Clean off my brush so I'm not pulling any more of that purple as I continue going. So blending is basically just a bunch of back and forth in between wetting your brush, drying your brush, and pulling down color. So my bristle got a little bit out there and if you notice there's like a light purple because I went ahead and colored that in the wrong spot. So just add a little more blue to that pink and try to just move it over. I think this little spot here can use a little more purple, some more purple. So I'm going to add that blue, add some more blue on top. 
and then I can go in and pull some of that down because this one seems to be a lot lower. So I'm going to pull this down a lot lower as well. Alrighty, and there we have a blend using two of the techniques, a blender pen and a brush. And this brush is a little bolder, it has a fuller tip than my Jane Davenport one. So if you notice, this one's a little thicker. And because it's a little thicker, sometimes um, if you're going too fast and you're not paying attention, some of the lines can start getting a little bit... I'm just fixing this little bottom part right here. Some of the lines will kind of... you'll start like making little things like that where you go off your line and you have to kind of try to fix it. So that's why using a thinner pen, a thinner brush is always the easiest because you're less likely to make those mistakes since you're going to be you're going to have a smaller surface as you're going. You're painting on a smaller surface. All right, let's do another one. Let's use I'm going to use my fluorescent highlighters. And I'm going to do the technique where I'm going to use only the brush. I'm not going to touch the marker. So I'm going to put some yellow on here, grab my brush. You want to have it a little wet, but not too wet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some of this ink with the brush and go ahead and Now because I want it to stay wet, once I've done this line, I'm going to add water to the letter so it doesn't dry out too quickly. So that way I can do my blends once I'm done. If you have a longer word, since I'm only doing two letters, it's pretty easy. When you have a longer word, I would go and start everything letter by letter instead of doing the entire word first. It might be a little easier. It all depends on your technique. Okay, and I'm going to add some red, so that way we get that red to orange. I'm going to add some on here. Whoops, just throwing my brush everywhere. I'm going to clean off my brush, so that way I don't get any contamination on the red, for now at least. And then pick up that red and start dabbing it into the yellow. And because we added all that water, if you notice, it's going to spread very quickly. So let me go ahead and just dab it on the tops. And your blend can start anywhere. I usually do dark to light. So dark on top, light on the bottom. But you can do light on top, dark on the bottom, however you want. All right, my ink is getting a little bit washed out. So I'm gonna add some more. Add that to the tittle here. And then we need that exclamation mark. Okay. Now I'm going to start adding, a, I'm going to clean off my brush and start adding some more water and pushing up. So that way that blend is a little more seamless. So here, this part is really wet, so the blend isn't drying very fast. So I'm just going to try to move some of that water around. And what you can always do is grab a piece of your paper towel or anything, whatever napkin you're using, just pick some of that up. Let's see, some of that yellow has disappeared. So what I'm going to do is just add some more. Like right here, when I picked up the ink, it kind of went away. Pick that up, I'll add some more here. Just move some of that ink around, and I'll pick some more up. And every time I pick some up, 
I've cleaned my brush so it's not contaminated by the red that I've touched. And again, when you have a wet on wet technique, whereas the, the, the water was wet and then the ink was wet, versus here where we started with a dry-ish a dry marker and then put on water, the blend will kind of bleed and do, do its own thing, so it's kind of cool to see where it'll go. It's more organic. Alrighty, and we have another one. Last but not least, I'm gonna use my Crayola markers and we'll do one last technique where I'll put the water down first and then add in the ink. So let me do that. First, let me actually get my colors down. I'm gonna do the pink and red combination. That's the only one I'm pretty much missing here. So I'm gonna put some pink down and I'm gonna put some red down. So I'm gonna do another block fawn. I have my first stroke for my H. And because I'm gonna I'm gonna want the blends to kind of touch from letter to letter, I'm making sure that the two letters are connected by this cross bar here. So now that I have my water down, I'm gonna pick up my colors. And you just have to lightly tap and let the water do the work for you and let everything flow. And I'm just kind of choosing random spots that aren't touching each other. So now I need to get some more pink, clean off my brush, pick up that pink and now start blending it with that red. And then because I have red and pink, I'm gonna want some more red on the bottom. And it's a little light, so I'm going to add more. To that bottom part to blend with the pink. And I'll want some red here. And because I have pink here, I'm going to want red, just so that blends nicely. Some red here. All right, and for the most part, this is all red, so now I'm gonna go back to my pink, and I need some more. And as you can see, because we're using markers, we have to sit here and expel the ink onto the palette or your Ziploc bag, so it will take some time. If you're doing like a piece with multiple words, a quote or anything, you just need a little bit of patience. And as you can see, my ink has already started, my water has already started drying. So I'm just gonna grab some more water and re-wet that area. And now as you see, um, one of the difficulties with putting the water down and using something like Crayola marker with it is that sometimes it could bleed if you add too much water or just, you know, it's just the nature of the paper. If you really want to do a super good wet on wet technique, you can use Arches. Arches is some of the best quality water paper out there. It's thicker and it can absorb so much more water without buckling or anything. Right now I'm going to add some more pink and some more red just on top of this. And let's try to clean this up a bit. The good thing is, is once it dries, you can always layer on top and fix any, anything that you don't like. So right now I'm going to clean up those edges. Now let me grab some pink. My brush is a little dry, so I'm going to go ahead and wet it. Get off any excess, excuse me, and start blending down. It's all about trial and error because when you're working with watercolor, the outcomes are never clear. That's part of the fun. Okay. 
And now the blend isn't as organic anymore, but at least I have started to clean up some of those really blurry edges. And because we have red coming into here, this top part should be a little more red as well. All right. And now we have that pink to red. Using that wet on wet, sometimes you have to go in there and touch up because it will blur a little bit. Maybe if I had some thicker paper or some of the other inks, it wouldn't have happened. But it's nice to troubleshoot and just kind of clean up those edges. And so we have all different kinds of blends. They're all will give you, they will all, excuse me, they will all give you different kinds of results. And I hope you can find whichever one works best for you and you fall in love with it and do a bunch of beautiful blends.